So we have seen that we can use the row functions to perform statistics on the rows of a data frame, but we have also seen that there's a limited number of these row functions available. So there was row means and row sums, and that's it. So it's not really a solution. How can we fix this? Well, by using the apply function. This is my favorite function in R. It allows you to perform a function on either all the rows or all the columns of a data frame. Any function. Any function that can work with a vector can be used here. So it's a very generic function. How does it work? Well, the input is a data frame, D. The second argument is called margin. And margin defines whether you're going to do a function on the rows, the columns, or the elements of a data frame. When margin is 1, it means you're going to work on the rows of the data frame. If margin is 2, you're going to work on the columns. And if margin is 1 colon 2, you're going to work on the elements of the data frame. The third argument is the function that you want to apply. And when it's a function that's built in in R, you can just write the name of the function. But I will come back on that later. So apply is one of a whole family of functions. There are many apply functions in R. And I listed two other ones here on the slide because I also use these a lot. And that's the L apply and the S apply function. They work on lists, so not on a data frame, but on a list. And they will apply a function on every object in that list. What's the difference between these two? Well, lapply will generate a list itself, so the output is a list. While asapply will generate a vector or a matrix, depending on which function you're using here. So, people who have experience with programming, they must have thought by now, why on earth isn't she doing a for loop here? Because in other programming languages, if you want to repeat a function on all the rows of a table, you're going to write a for loop for that. Now, in R, it's discouraged to use for loops because they are very slow. They are not efficient. Now, of course, apply is using a for loop eh? behind the scenes. It is using a for loop, but that for loop was written by an IT person who knew what he or she was doing and who could write a for loop way more efficient than you and I can. So this is why in R you are encouraged to use the apply function instead of writing your own for loops. So the apply makes use of very efficient for loops, but still then on huge data sets, they are still very slow. So in these cases, the row functions are created. What is the difference between the row functions and apply? Well, apply uses an efficient for loop in R. The row functions, they use a for loop in C++ because R was written on top of C++. So in the row functions, the for loop is done in C++, which is much faster than in R. Now you can imagine it's not so straightforward to write for loops in C++. You have to know what you're doing. So they're created when it's really necessary. So when there are large data sets, and for instance, you want to calculate the median of each row, then someone will write a row medians function. So it does exist, the row medians function, but it's somewhere in a very exotic package. And that's the problem with the row functions. They are scattered over different packages. And it's very hard to find the one that you need. But for most applications, for most data sets, the apply functions will be more than enough efficient. So for most applications, you're going to work with the apply functions. I will show in our studio. So we're going to apply 
what are we going to apply? We are going to apply the function called var. So the function that calculates the variance. This is a function that's built in in R. So you can just write the name, that's all. So no brackets, nothing, just the name, and R will find the function that you need. So you're going to calculate the variance of what? Well, margin is one here. You're going to calculate the variance of all the rows of the US judge ratings data set. So when I run this line of code, I get the variance for each judge. So what if you want to use a function that is not known in R? Well, in that case, you have to explicitly write the word function, as you can see here. This will notify R that you're going to define your own function. So what are we doing here? We're doing a division. He knows the division, but division by a certain thing that's not a built-in function in R. Eh? So you have to explicitly write function to tell him this is my own function. Function of what? A function of x. You can write anything here. You can also use y or z or whatever, but you have to write something here. Most people use x. What is x? Well, x is defined by the margin. So the margin is 2 here. It means that x will be every column of the US judge ratings data frame. So what are we going to do with x? With every column from US judge ratings, we're going to divide x by the first element of x. So we're going to divide every column by the first element in that column. So when I run this line of code, and I scroll up a bit here, here we are, you see that each element in each column was divided by the first element in that column. That's why the first row are all ones here. Many people use this for normalizing their data. So what if you want to normalize by the first element in the data frame? Well, in that case, you're first going to retrieve the first element, so the element on the first row and the first column, and you're going to save that in a variable. So when I run this, you see here, this is the first element. And now you can divide every element in US judge ratings by this n. How? Well, by using the apply function, you specify here that you want to write your own function because a division by n is not built in in R. So it's your own function. You have to write function. Function of x, what is x in this case? Well, every element. Eh? So the margin has to be 1 colon 2. And then you're going to divide every x, every element from US judge ratings by n. So when I run this line of code, every element is divided by the first element in the data frame. It's another way of doing a normalization. I want to show one example of the lapply function because it's a really useful function, especially in combination with the split function. So what is split doing? Let's take a look at the documentation. So split will divide a data frame. It works on vectors, but also on data frames. It will divide a data frame into groups defined by a factor, by one of the columns in the data frame that contains a grouping variable. So as an example here, I will split empty cars into different groups according to the sill column the number of cylinders that the car has. So when I run this line of code, it creates a list with three objects. Let's take a look here, that list. What are these three objects? So these are data frames, as you can see. You have one data frame with cars with four cylinders, a data frame with cars with six cylinders and a data frame of cars with eight cylinders. 
So you have split empty cars into three groups, depending on the values in the seal column. So you have a list now with three objects. So now you can use lapply, the list apply function, to perform a function on each object in that list. Which function? Well, as an example here, I'm writing my own function again. What is x in this case? x will be every object of the list. So here, x will be a data frame. What are we going to do with that data frame? Well, we're going to retrieve from that data frame the car, the row, the car with the highest miles per gallon. So when I run this line of code, I will create a new list. Yeah, the output of lapply is always a list. What does that new list look like? It contains for every group of cars, it contains the car with the highest miles per gallon. 